Hello, Adam. Oi, oi. How are you, mate? All right, how are you? Flying, pal. Flying. Glad to. Glad we're back on here for a bit of a ding dong. It's been a minute. You're keeping well enough, yeah? Yeah. Didn't you go to uh, one part of America and then somewhere else? Where you been? Like, t- tell us all what you've been up to, Adam. Uh, let me see. Spill the, spill the beans. Spill the beans. Uh, I was doing a bit of work out in Kansas, so I was traveling out there. We're setting up a lab for work. Um, so that was something different. Um, that was fun. That's quiet enough spot, but not in a bad way. We university town. So we were out that end, and then we were up in Vegas visiting uh in law's family and stuff like that there as well. Um so Where yeah, mate. From, Adam? What's that? Where are they from? Uh Canada originally. Um yeah. But uh, they have a house out in Vegas, so it's fair handy, man. Like when I went out for the for the Lopez fight, it's um, because you know yourself when you're when you're paying for hotels and resort fees and all that, that that's where you get caught out. So if you have somewhere to stay, anytime you want to head out, man, it solves a lot of headaches and saves a lot of dollars. So very very lucky to have it, you know. Yeah, yeah, and where are you now? Back in back in uh, back on the on the west coast, chief, sitting in the gaff for the dog. On a sunny Sunday, so it could be a lot worse. Yeah, yeah. Could be on a big run ticket deal. <laughs> the stuff of nightmares, huh? That's when you know you're at end of road. <laughs> oh, you're you're circling the dream, no doubt about it, hey. <laughs> I'm, pu- I'm full of positivity, aren't I, on a Sunday? Oh, both of us, mate, absolutely, but... Uh... No. Adam, did what, did yes, you, sir. what did you make of uh, Eddie Hills' uh, show last night? The scene was set for Terry Harper and Campbell Hands of Foam Hatton <laughs> and uh, whatnot. What did you make of it all, uh, uh, Adam? T- tell me what you think. Yeah, so uh, obviously we, we hand out pelters at a premium uh, or the opposite on here. But credit credit do I thought on paper it was a good card. And I know some of the fights went probably contrary to how Hearn wanted them to go. But I thought it was a good card, man, from, from top to bottom. I say that, I, I saw Cameron, and then I watched the the main five, just I was doing other bits and bobs. Um, but, yeah, mate, good card. Um, you know, good fights. Uh, uh, very impressed with, with Dalton Smith up top. I mean, the, the Hatton fight... Um, like again, we've talked about it with Chris Eubank Jr. When you know when you're born, you have no control over who your dad is, but what you can control is kind of how you how you train, how you act inside and outside of the ring. Um, and you know, I mean, it looked like he ran out of gas five, you know, from five or six rounds on, but he dug the heels in and he was still throwing hooks with twenty seconds left. Um, so I was impressed with his with his doggedness and his heart. Um. You know, good judging. You obviously, you and I were talking on the side. Are they going to try and rob him? Whatever. But the cards were 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 spotless, really, in that fight at least. And I thought Hatton was cool afterwards. Just no complaints. I know there's talk of him doing a U turn this morning, but I, I don't know. I like the way he handled himself in the fight and then after it. Um. But happy for Flint too. You know, he held on to the belt. It obviously meant a lot to him. And, uh, you know, he kind of planned out the fight well. He kind of just hung in there for the first three or four rounds and then just started to pull away from Hatton. So I thought it was an entertaining watch, for sure, man. Um, I mean, fair play to Hatton for taking the route that he's going. Like, I genuinely have respect for him. You know, he's doing it the way most hardcore fans would want him to do it. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not going to kick a fellow when he's down, but... I mean, there's so, so, so many holes in his defense, man, um, that he needs to plug ASAP if he wants to to go up even another level or two. Oh, he's so open. It's kind of hard to watch at times. Um, but like I said, you, you can train that sort of stuff. You can't train somebody to be a dog, and it seems like he's got that in him. So, um, you know, maybe with the right coaching, he can kind of turn it around. What do you think? I think he's tough, isn't he? Mm. He's tough. He's a tough kid. He is. No doubt about it. No doubt. So, hey, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll see. We'll see how. I mean, again, like I said, it's uh, 
you know, respect to him for last night. I know he lost or whatever, but he definitely left with my respect. So, uh, yeah. yeah, onwards and upwards, hopefully. Eddie said they need a rematch, but he needs a warm-up first. What do you think to that? Uh, I mean, a maybe you want... Central for an area belt. I know, it seems mad. This is where we're getting to now. Um, But... The only thing I would say, like what we talked about a minute ago, there, like the kind of holes that he leaves, you know, especially whether he's throwing a right hook or a left hook, there's just no coverage on the other side. And I think a bigger puncher last night would have got him out of there. Um, and that's not me taking anything away from Flint. I thought he handled the fight great, you know what I mean? I was happy for him to win. Um, the only positive I would say for having like a warm up or a fight in between would be to see if he can kind of, um, close up some of those gaps but like you say for an area level um you know but it, they're, they're gonna handle it this way because it's ricky hatton so do you know what i mean it's a big name you know if he goes in there again right away against flint and he gets stuck you know what i mean if he loses twice at area level you know what i mean the the razzle dazzle is kind of gone so i i would say that's probably why Hearn wants to wants to have like a, a fight in between me what and keep propping shows that we hands of foam yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, I mean, for all intents and purposes, he's a pretty likable young fella. He's tough. Um, you know, obviously he's got that name. Um, so yeah, mate. I would say, I would say, if Hearn does give him a fight in between, it's probably just because he wants to protect the asset. Um, but like I said, yeah, but what asset is he though? He ain't got a belt, so how is he an asset? Well, he's an asset, and if if nothing else, he's an asset in the name alone. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I mean, you well, you, you look what now. What if Gordon Ramsay's son takes boxing up? Is he an asset? <laughs> I would say in Eddie Hill's eyes, he probably is, mate. I mean, this is where the game's going. Unfortunately, uh, I mean, y you look at what Eddie Hearn's gone through to try and keep Conor Ben clean. He's went to hell and back with him and for him, and I would say behind closed doors, he probably regrets it an awful lot now. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't agree with it. I'm just saying that, um, I think that's kind of where we are. Um, you know, but it, look, Ben and Hatton, they're two big British domestic names. So I kind of get it, but, uh, yeah, her will try and protect them and keep rolling them out. I think so anyway, for now, because like I said, if he goes out and loses to Flint again, it's not a good look at all. Back to back losses in your 15th fight. So uh, our sixteenth fight, sorry, but we'll, we'll we'll see, man. See how he goes. I'll be interested to see what that warm up fight looks like. You know. Yeah. What did you think to uh, Terry Harper's performance against Sandy Ryan for the welterweight championship of the world? Hmm. Um. When you and I spoke last about it, I didn't really have a pick, but my worry going into it was always. Um, I think that fight against Bumgarner, uh, I think that put the fear of God into Harper, honestly. Um, and I think uh, I think it's affected her mentally um, and physically, like in terms of the ability to take a shot. Um, I don't know, mate. Like it's um, it's not really a good look. Like I like Harper. She seems like a good soul behind it all. Like I'm not wishing bad on her. It's just. Um, you know, is she going to go back up the weights now if she can't take a shot at, at where they were fighting? Um, I, I don't know, man. I, I kind of don't see... I know she still holds a belt, so it kind of sounds like a ridic ridiculous thing to say, but I don't see where she goes from here. Like, for me, for her to win a fight now at a good level, the fight has to go absolutely perfectly for her. Like, you know, she's got that kind of Joe Parker stay on the outside style. So... For her to win a fight, it's basically get in, land a jab or a one-two, get back out, and and, keep, and maintain that for, for 20 minutes. What we saw last night was, you know, obviously she's, I'm not, she's a good boxer, but it, it was almost like, do you remember Clubber Lang versus Drago in, in Rocky Four? You know, Clubber Lang looked great when he was moving and smiling and joking, but the second Rocky Ivan three, Drago... Wasn't it? Rocky Three, wasn't it? A Rocky... Glub, was three, Rocky Three, wasn't it, Glubber? Uh, oh, sorry, Clubber Lang was three, Rocky Four was Drago. Sorry, I was, I'm thinking of Apollo Creed, my bad, my bad, my bad. 
but uh, when Apollo was fighting Drago out and uh, when James Brown was walking the boys in and stuff, you know, he looked good. He was dancing around. But once Drago got to him, it was game over. Um, I kind of feel like that's where Harper is at the minute, where if, if, if somebody can punch at all and they can get to her once, I feel like it's almost fight over. Um, so I don't know, mate. I mean, she kind of looked a wee bit relieved after the fight too. Yeah, um, yeah, she didn't want to uh, do any the interviews and all that, and she looks happy to me. Looked like it was all yeah. over, relieved to death, wasn't she? Like, yeah. So, well, I, I mean, if that's your feeling after the fight, like, look, I'm not, uh, you know, she's not, and I don't know what age she is off the top of my head, but she's not overly old. Um, I don't know, mate. I think it's a bit of a, a woman in the mirror moment where uh, she has to kind of figure out does she still want to continue doing it at this level? Um, physically and mentally, because, like I said, it just seemed like she was kind of relieved after a fight, uh, a fight that you know people fancy her to win, and I don't know if that's a good place to be in mentally if you're a fighter, you know. So, we'll see, man. Wish her all the best. I uh, but I think that was a uh, that was a bad moment for her last night. Big wake up call. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh... And Sandy Ryan obviously was on to better things, but Terry Harper, she's been knocked out now at 130, 147. She's still got a belt at 154. How's she going to hold them shots? I know. That's that's my worry, man. Like, I, you know, there was talk before the fight about, you know, and I know it's been come up after from, from Mr. Bull, um, but, you know, she's still got a belt and we have that to fall back on and stuff. Um like, like I said, if she's she not able weight, to think of... Messing with weights again, it's like Kel Brook, isn't it? Yeah. The, like, it, it's still wild impressive, but you, you've seen this with Katie Taylor too, and obviously Chantel Cameron. You, you see, like, double unifications and the women's uh, and, and female boxing a lot more just because the talent pool is much more shallow. Um, and you've seen that with Harper. But put it like this, right? If she wants to continue and, she, and her heart's in it, Pick What's a weight? weight though? What's her weight though? Because she's up and down like a yo-yo, 130, 154, 147. What next? Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. If, if she still wants to do it, pick a weight and stick to it. Just sticking yeah. her in fights to make doing men to get opportunities for money and giving the girl knocked about, or is she going to have a proper weight she's going to fight at? She's only 27. She looks like she don't scrap eat. I uh, know twenty. I was gonna say she's like twenty nine, thirty. Uh, still a young woman. Um, she's had eighteen fights. Right, Sandy Ryan's had nine. Look what she's just done to her. <coughs> so what? She what they're teaching her after eighteen fights? If that other girl's had nine. I know. Um, like I said, I think they need to pick a weight and stick at it. I mean, obviously we have certain opinions about certain people, but. If, if you look at the last time Bull was out on, on the Bricktop show or on Frank Warren's show where he had Sylvester and a uh, very similar, you know, this kind of game plan of just like things have to go punch perfect for his fighters to win a fight. Um, it's not so... done in a round, didn't he? What's that? Gunningham got done in a round. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just not sustainable, man. In my opinion, like, look, I'm no, I'm no coach, but it's, uh, like, like to me last night when you looked at Harper, it seemed like w once, once, uh, once she was got at, there was no plan B. Do you know what I mean? It was more a case of oh, shit. When, when's this? Uh, when's this going to peter out? Um, so I don't know, mate. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe I, I know that they might have a close relationship. Maybe she would. Uh, maybe she'd be wiser at twenty seven. Maybe going on to different pastures, but uh, and you know, just kind of changing up her style a wee bit. But again. That, that's her decision to make. Um, but she definitely needs to stick to her weight if she's going to come back at it properly. So I wish her all the best. Like I said, she seems like a good lady. Um, so wish her all the best. Think she'll fight again? Uh, do you know what, man? Like from a reaction last night, I probably lean into she doesn't. Because like you said, if she sticks around at 147... Yeah. There's not many. One fifty four. They're about exactly. But even like, like you know, there was talk of um, you know, obviously there's there's some good ladies at those weights, but it's like un unless she takes a step down in terms of who she's fighting, I don't see her picking up wins easily or at all. 
Um, do you know, like, can you imagine putting her on against like a Tasha Jonas or like a Shield? You know, like I know Shields is, is is obviously top of the pile, but like, unless she wants to take a step down, um, I don't know, mate. I, 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 I'm not telling her to retire. I just seen from her body language last night that she might have uh, mentally, she might have one foot out the door. But like I said, I wish her well. I don't know what her financial situation is like. It's none of my business. I hope she's, I hope she's somewhat set. Um, because you know a lot, a lot of retirement and boxing comes down to do people have enough money in their bank account. Um, so I, I just, I hope she makes the right decision for her, and that uh, she doesn't let, uh, you know, other people in her ear tell her what she should be doing if she feels something in her heart. So I hope she makes the right decision for herself, Paul. Yeah, it was a bit scary. It's a bit, it was a bit scary. A question like that, it was like they were not in tank, wasn't it? Nothing, mate. No, even, even like when the third round ended, she was kind of just uh, like I said, you know, obviously, look, if you're taking a beating, I'm sure you'd be happy to see the bell, but uh, obviously, they know something from within camp. I mean, I kind of like the stoppies just because I didn't think she could win the fight. Uh, but at the same time, if you as a coach really fancied her, you would probably give her another, you know, at least minute of another round. Um, so whether that was Bull or that was uh, Harper and Bull, a combination of them just saying the fight's over, I don't know. But uh, yeah, mate, to me, mentally, it doesn't look like uh, it doesn't look like she's fully there anymore. It's amazing what it does to you, isn't it? The sport, and it one minute you can be riding high, she's still got, she's still a world champion at one at another weight. Mm -hmm. Imagine having to go defend that belt now. I know, mate. I know, and like I keep, I, I always go back to it, like, but I remember seeing that Bumgarner uh, knockout. I say knockout. She was obviously out on her feet. Ah, uh, that was a scary one, man. Do you know what I mean? Like it's a. Uh... It's one thing seeing somebody crumpled up on the floor, but it's another thing seeing somebody that looks like they're still in, in the room, but they're not there at all. Um, I feel like she's never been the same woman since. And we go back to that PED discussion. I know the WBC cleared Bumgarner, you know, they give her the Connor Bang clear. So to me, that's the equivalent of nothing. It's not worth the paper it's printed on. Yeah. Um, that had as an asterisk. That punch could have destroyed Terry Harper's career. That girl could have been on gay, couldn't she? But that's my, like, in my opinion, it did ruin her career. I'm not completely writing her off. I just don't think she's been the same fighter since. And Bumgarner pissed hot. So, you know, you can't tell me there's zero chance that she wasn't um, on the hot sauce in that fight. So I feel bad for Harper. Like I say, yeah, I like her. She seems like a good lady. Um, and I feel like she's been kind of unlucky with how things have, uh, how things have played out for her in the ring and outside. So, like I say, mate, wish her all the best. I hope I hope there's a I hope there's a nice ending to this story, you know, and it's not not last night. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what do you think to the show as a whole out of ten? Uh you know, we, Yeah, prob probably an eight point five. Eight, 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 eight point five, something like that. Sorry, what was your last question, Paul? What do you think to lighting? Um I mean, not great. Uh, I mean, that's kind of the norm now. You see that in America and stuff too. These kind of YouTube boxing shows or any kind of shows where they're not sold out. Um, I mean, it's not a great sign, but it's weird too because you look at boxing in terms of, of like arenas. And I know it was Sheffield last night. Um, but like, you know, you even look at, let, let's just go like to obviously London as a staple. You've got the O2. I think what the O two O two holds what seventeen eighteen thousand is that right something like that, yeah. and then you look at the copper box, which I think is a brilliant. Uh, I think it's a great spot for for boxing, but it just never works out that way for whatever reason. Um, so I don't know, mate. The, the point I'm kind of trying to make is, is it's hard finding a, a a middle ground between like having you know a decent uh, arena that's only half sold out. And then having like a you know a smaller kind of venue like a York Hall or something, but you know you can't be putting the card like like we had last night in a small hall either. Um, I don't like them was whatever. I don't know. I mean, I was just very impressed with the show. Um, overall, you know, like I say, even 
even the upsets were still exciting fights. The likes of Harper and Hatton, and then you know Dalton Smith looked uh he looked brilliant. I thought, man, to be honest, he looked really good in different ways. Yeah, Dalton Smith. Mm. Like, he doesn't shout and ball on that. He he gets down to business and does the business, doesn't he? He does, man. He kind of reminded me, you know, because Cepeda did have his moments, no doubt, early. He kind of reminds me a wee bit of Tank Davis with how efficient he is. Like, if you look at him, yeah. he doesn't waste a punch. You know what I mean? Like, he really doesn't waste a punch. Um, And obviously, you know, Cepeda had his moments early. Obviously, he got him up against the ropes for, you know, 10, 15 seconds. Um, So, you know, the first two rounds, you could have split them or, you know, you could have went whatever, you know, but I thought like three, four, you could just see Smith was starting to kind of figure it out, download the data, as people say, even if it's a bit cringe. Um, and then obviously he just got it done in the fifth. But I thought, you know, he looked mature given the kind of how the fight started and given like, you know, his lack of experience at, at you know, whatever this level. Um, you know, he looked good. He picked his punches, done the business, you know, nice and civilized on the mic after, respectful to the other guy. Um, yeah, to me, mate, he's definitely somebody we can get behind. Uh, seems like a good lad, very good fighter. He can punch. Um, so yeah, definitely on the Dalton Smith train, even if he is promoted by Eduardo. What about Dalton Smith against Tank Davis? Oh, baby. Hey, could you imagine that? Oh, that would be pay per view now, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, we're cooking, Ross. No, we are cooking, pal. That's oh my god, that dream, isn't it? Dalton Smith against Tank Davis at, at a football stadium or something. Oh, Jesus, now that is a fight. So, what we're, we're, we're looking at, yeah, because I mean, Tank's small, but like, you know, he doesn't. It seems like you know, Tank could have kind of came through the weights better, but you know, between drinking and partying and doing whatever, he's kind of had to move up. Um, yeah, mate, that'll be a banger. Um, the battle of the, the battle of the efficient man. You know, you can have certain rounds where there's only fourteen punches thrown and stuff, but um, you you would imagine it would end in a stoppage. Um, yeah, definitely be a fight I could get behind. But I would like to see. I would like to see the Azim fight. Like I, I, I get why she and McGuigan, uh, and their their team. I get why they wouldn't want it now. It, it probably favors Smith more. Um, but you know, it's it's kind of naturally set up. You know what I mean? Like the European belt, all the rest. Um, I would like to see it because, you know, we're always asking for for fights to happen. I mean, the two guys are, are very young relatively in terms of their career. They're just getting started. Um, you know, I think we need to, we've talked about it loads and loads, Paul, but we need to get away from this mentality of the O, oh, the O, oh, the O, oh, who gives a crap? Boys go in, put on an absolute smash and fight. People walk away with a smile on their face. I think even the loser would come away with street credit. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then you can do the rematch down the line whenever it fits in. So I would like to see it. I, we probably don't see it next, but uh, w what do you reckon? Uh, would you like to see Azim and, and Smith get it on? Yeah, I would. I'd also like to see Loser, a Catrell, Taylor fight Azim or Smith. Mm. That's a good shout, actually. If we ever see that fight, man, it, it seems like it's cursed. Old Jack Taylor, or sorry, Josh Taylor and Catterall. Seems like it's cursed at this point, doesn't it? Yeah, the, you know, it's, it's just one big mess about, and it messes. Yeah. Absolute messes, like 99% of people in boxing. Mm. Um yeah I, f I feel like and I could be completely wrong about this but I feel like it, it plays into to Josh Taylor's hands more and more pardon me because if you, if you look at Catterall's style you know what I mean like and that's not me digging him out you know what I mean but he stay on the outside he's a counter puncher and, and, that, and that's fine um, all of this anger and animosity and cancellations and, and uh, you know rage that you can see in Catterall's eyes I don't think it plays into his fighting style at all and I think these delays and, and the, 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 the trash talk and all the rest, I think that's kind of, you know, it wouldn't be his MO usually. So, uh, 
Yeah, mate, with the, with the with this delay as well, I, I would still fancy Taylor. Who knows what's going on in the, uh, behind the scenes too? Maybe Taylor's messing about, but I would definitely fancy them. Fancy Taylor, sorry if if they do get in there. I hope it happens, just for closure, because uh, it's just been a mess from start to finish, like you say. I'd say Big Sam Jones is sweating it though, big time, isn't he? <laughs> big Samuel, is he? <laughs> I would think so, mate. He's he's ten percent is is in the wind. I know it got rescheduled, but um, yeah, I would say he's uh, it's squeaky bum time for Sam. He's got to get that, got to get that rent money. And do you know what? He was basking in the glory last week, wasn't he? Loving it, absolutely loving it. Dictating his fee and what, wasn't it? and why, what he were entitled to, and what he were proper off his head, wasn't he? Hmm. And then it's funny when I, when I saw that fight got cancelled or rescheduled, the, act, the first person I actually thought of was Sam Jones, and I got a wee laugh to myself. It's like it's like he's at home crying in his porridge. Oh my god! Crying but... in his porridge, mate. You could hear the squeals all the way from Derby, all all, all the way over to here, South Yorkshire, all the way. Don't uh, you happy, happy, happy to see you. Uh, oh my days, that's so feel funny. Feel big. Uh, do you remember? Do you remember deliverance squeal like a pig? You're reminding me of that. Oh my god. Jones, yeah, come here, boy. You is like a hog. <laughs> hey, we've not heard out about Big Joe Egan and uh, Big John. Have we? What's going on there? Ah, uh, the boys. The boys are old news. Thank God. Um, yeah, just it was like a bad smell for a while. We couldn't get rid of it, and obviously with Big Joe going on through Geordie and stuff, it kind of blew a wee bit of oxygen on the fire for another couple of weeks. But ah, look, people move on. I mean, the sport's in good shape overall in terms of you know what's on the calendar, at least for the next year. So you know, if if it was if we were back in the dark ages or something, there might be a bit more of a market for this, or there was nothing else going on. But you know, there's plenty of good cards coming up. Obviously, everything going on in Saudi. So um, so yeah, mate. I think it's just hopefully it's dying a quick death because it's a waste of time, really, isn't it? Well, oh, Big Joe's last hurrah. Mm, Big Joe. Um, I don't know. I'd say he's gonna have to. He's going to have to get on to his best buddy, Mr. Tyson, uh, and try and organise another another roundup, another... But sure now he's fighting Jake Paul. There'll be none of these a night with Mike Tyson in Birmingham. Those days are over, you know? So I don't know what Big Joe's going to do moving forward. I don't. What about Big John? <laughs> Is he ever going to have a fight? No, 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 no. Not a chance, Smith. Not a chance. Do you remember that video I sent you? I'm working the bag recently. Mm. Oh, don't get me wrong. John. Yeah, Big John. Um, she. I couldn't get over her, but like, look, don't get look for his age and stuff. He, you know, and I'm not even pandering, but like, he keeps himself in relatively decent shape. Oh, I know he carry savage if he clips you, Big John. Mm. Oh, I'd say you could put me out. No worries, Big, uh, big... Fowler. Big sturdy man, you know, he's carrying a bit of timber, but for his age, he does keep himself in pretty good shape. But he looked purr on the bag, mate. Jesus, he was out of gas after four shots. So, how could he fight and who would he fight? Do you know? It's just, yeah, yeah. I don't know, mate. It's not, uh, I hope it isn't in the cards. You Live, know, lives off the land. <laughs> It'd be worse than uh, than Logan Paul and Dylan Danis. Do you remember that? He asked, eats things that would make a billy goat. Puke. <laughs> the legend, the big John. Oh man! Roasts things that swim and crawl. <laughs> you know he's like he's like a he's like a sub character in Little Red Riding Hood or something like that, isn't he? The, the fella with the cabin out in the woods. You know, one hundred and sixty kilo logs, deadlifted <laughs> with his Corey. Oh, big John. And all while, while I'm I five, watching me from the moon. Oh, he's the, to be fair to him, he's the anti hero we need for these kind of laughs because we still do get a laugh. So 
Fair he's play to him. Speaking of laughs, the can man and Eddie mm. Hills. Eddie Hills has come out talking about loyalty. Mm. And saying Dylan White didn't pay him anything from the Fury fight, but Dylan White saying I didn't have to, want in contract or mandatory, want your show. So Eddie's saying he didn't go into bat for him like he like he could do. Is yeah. Dylan White on the outside looking in? Because you know Brick Top, right? Brick mm-hmm. Top's uh, had that show Fury White, didn't he? White didn't help with any promotion, did he? No. No, he did, did did the opposite actually. So what he tried to sue not sue, doesn't he? But he told them they couldn't use his images. Um I'll be honest, I, I thought White had an absolute nightmare with that Fury fight for start to finish from start to finish. I felt bad for him for a long time because he was mandatory and he was due a shot. Um uh, but then there was chat too that he was offered the shot, but he didn't it wasn't enough money for him. So you don't fully know. But that whole uh Fury fight was a disaster. You know, he didn't show up and then he didn't want his photo used. And he was poor. I thought he was poor in the in the in the press conferences. And then obviously the fight was very poor. I don't know. I thought it was uh it was very flat from the can man from start to finish. Mm. I also didn't realise, mate, I thought his last fight was in Dublin. I didn't realise it was out in the sticks down in Mayo. Um, they don't get me wrong. I have loads of mates from Mayo. Great County people. Mayo is that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, it's a lovely part of the country. Like it's 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 quite similar to where I'm from. Like up in Donegal, quite rural. You know, a couple of small, busy towns like Castle Bar, but you know, it's no, it's not a sprawling metropolis at all. I thought he was fighting in Dublin, but they they had him down in Castle Bar. So, uh, you know, it's not even it's not even top of the line. In Ireland, do you know what I mean? So, and then he was given a hammer stick too, saying you're a coward. And you did... don't get me wrong. I thought, I thought, I thought, uh, I thought Hammer was poor. You know, I thought he, he came to lift a paycheck. Uh, but Dillian White didn't do too much against Fury in six or seven rounds, did he? As well. So, I, I don't know, man. Um, the Can Man is, I don't know. I mean. You know, Terry made a good point when you yeah, guys were on. What's that? Done, aren't they? Because what did he get for that? Nine million for that Fury fight, were it? Like eight million quid. Yeah, it was eighty twenty. Fury got like thirty one. Twenty percent of that. Eddie's on for what? One million six fifty or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. So Eddie's thinking of his one million six fifty, isn't he? Basically. Yeah. That, but Eddie ain't got legally. He can't get zilch off white. Can't can it? Can't he? Not not a nickel. So, no, that, no. so that's why there's there's gonna be no favors for White then, is there? Zero, mate. Zero. Um White's burnt yeah. bridges everywhere, aren't he really? Yeah, I would say if it was 160k, never mind 1.6 million, I'd say you know Hearn would still be looking for it. But 1.6, even to a lad like Hearn, that's a good chunk of money. So he's not gonna let that go ever. Um yeah, look, the can man's got himself in an awkward spot. I know he's saying now he's proved his innocence and stuff. I have different opinions on that, but whatever. They cleared him to fight. Um, I don't know where. I mean, do, does he does he sign? I don't know. Does he sign like short term? Does he do one fight deals with like like Lou DeBella and that other fella that has Franklin out on the East Coast? I mean, does he do something like that? Um, because if Bricktop's going to take him on, you know. White is not in the power position at all. So domestically, he's going to have to take what he can get. But uh, I don't know, mate. Like, again, I'd be surprised to see him back at a good level. Uh, and like you and Terry were talking about, unless AJ wants to, um, you know, unless AJ wants a warm-up fight or something or a stay-busy fight, I think that's his only chance at a big fight domestically. Because it Did looks now see- like... Go ahead. No, no, no please. I was going to say, could you see White uh, going to Sky? Ah. Uh, yeah. I suppose you could, really, actually. Um, I mean, who do they have at heavyweight? They had Parker. They let him go. Jack Massey. They have Massey. Um, and then a lot of boys, a cruiser, bridger, and light heavy. Yeah. I mean, I guess so. It's, um, big, free, it's big freeze. Yeah. A couple of fights in there, actually. Um. Could fight its big freeze or Wardley. He could. He could fight the winner. Um, um, guy would have Dylan White. Do you know what? 
depends what sort of shape he's in. He, even at the age he's at, and even with all the failures and the time off and stuff, I think, gee, I don't know if Ben Shalom would put Fraser Clark in with, with a guy like White because, you know, even with his age and all the rest, one thing you have to give White that he's got lots of heart. He is a tough lad. You know, that is undisputable, whether it's PEDs or not. Um, and I don't know, mate, I, I don't think F Fraser Clark re reacts well to toughness, the to boys that dig the heels in. Um, you know, I mean, I, I think he should, I, I think Fraser Clark should have had a much easier night against Dave Allen than he had. You know, I know it was a while ago, but uh, I wouldn't fancy Clark that much when it, when when the pressure gets on and, and the heat starts heating up in the kitchen. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't fancy him a hundred percent. So, uh, and be it, look for either him or Wardley. It would be a really good, it would be a really good kind of examination of where the guys are at. Uh, but we'll see, mate. I mean, look, Dillian White still is an EM. He's still got a following in London. He still will sell tickets. Um, so we we will likely see him out. Sky's probably the most likely destination. Now that you bring that up. Because uh, we can't the, fight in UK, can he? No, not yet. I don't think so. But um, they'll get that. So I think they'll get it sorted the same way they'll get it sorted gonna for Conor Ben. On, who's going to take a chance on him with his history? Uh well, from 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 my perspective and yours, that's the way I look at it. I'm like, this lad has four failures. I know we might have got clear with some of them, but it's still four strikes on the record. Um, he's got form for it. He's been temperamental. He's been hard to deal with outside of the ring. Um, I know people who didn't even pay for sparring. Vito O'Reilly sparred him, didn't even pay him. Really? Yeah, six and a half hundred quid knocked on him. Jesus, see, there you go. I didn't know that at all, obviously. Um, yeah, look, listen, if you're not, um, you get out what you put in. If you don't have respect and love within your own circles and you don't treat others with respect, then he's probably going to be walking a, a lonely road. But uh, what we did to Mark Tibbs after the mm, 11 straight fights with him, and yeah, then we uh, Xavier Miller and Coldwell got knocked out, didn't he? For the first fight after he left Tibbo, yep. I mean, yeah, he doesn't always get everything right, Dylan, does he? Should he have paid Eddie Earn that 20%? What he should have done is got a carrier bag with a million quid in it and gone round and said, yeah, Eddie, tax-free. There you go. And Eddie would have always remembered that. He'd have loved that, Eddie. Yeah. You know what I mean? He he tax-free, don't have to pay any tax on it. million quid. And that's to, get, that's to get him into position for cashing me out at Wembley. Eight-point-odd million. Thanks, Eddie. That's what he should have done. Yeah, that would have worked. Jeez, it would have been a long-term investment too because it would have got him signed back up with Matchroom right away. You know, three or four more fights probably. But uh... no, he'd, have had a, he'd have had a mate for life and he'd have always had media work for life and he'd have like sealed friendship. And there you go, Eddie. Thanks very much. That would have been the gentleman thing to do. Yeah. He no, had a million quid in a carry bag. Yeah. That, shit, that, that nearly would have saved her money. If you take the tax away, he probably would have cleared an extra 150 if he got a carrier bag with a million in it. So, um, yeah, look, shoulda, woulda, coulda. Again, I don't I don't have... I enjoyed White back in the day. Like, uh, I loved him and AJ's first fight. I know technically it wasn't great and stuff, but it was two young domestic lads. Like, we were talking earlier about Adam Azim and, uh, and Dalton Smith. You know, it was two young guys with a bit of history, a bit of needle, Again, it wasn't technically a brilliant fight, um, but at least there was something to it. Um, but you know, I think his career's kind of tailed off from from there. Um, you want to jump on the part two, Paul? Yeah, go on then, mate. No problem. Nice one. See you now. Thanks for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment and sharing the videos on your WhatsApp to your pals. Right, we'll go on to part two with Adam. Women love him, men want to be him.